Peter Gabriel, former lead singer of Genesis, revolutionized music videos with Sledgehammer and set a media milestone with the CD-ROM Eve. Peter Gabriel has made his nest in Box Mill, southwest England. The mill is bordered on one side by a railway line and on the other by a small river. The sounds of the water and the trains inspire him. He has pioneered the integration of ethnic music into modern popular music. He's the founder of the Witness Project, which denounces human rights violations. He's quite down to earth, with none of the typical pop star attitude. I'm Peter Gabriel. We are sitting, or I'm sitting, outside my studio. This is the Bay Brook, which is the river that passes by us and travels uh, down through Bristol to the sea. I was born in 1950 on a farm just near Woking in Surrey. My dad uh, is an electrical engineer and inventor. Um, my mother, she had many passions, a very good organizer, but she loves music, um, horses, travel. So I have bits of both of them in me. Um, I went to school nearby, uh, it was a private school. And then um, at the uh, second school, I started playing music, which with drums was the, the big thing for me. That got me into a band which became Genesis, uh, which I was with for uh, about eight years. Then I left and did stuff on my own. Uh, I've been working a lot with world music and we started a world music festival. Um, and on one tour I was invited for a Human Rights Now tour. And that got me involved uh, with human rights activism. Um, there have been quite a few other diversions, but that's sort of led me to this part of the world uh, where I have my home for making music. I think for me, my work is a form of therapy. You know, as a teenager, a lot of people want to be a rock musician so they can um, get girls and get famous, and I'm sure that's part of my motivation then, but now I think it's, it's something else. The, the feeling I have for music, and particularly when I'm with other musicians. I mean, we do recording weeks here where we get musicians from all over the world and we play together, and there's a fantastic feeling uh, that I don't get anywhere else. So I think for me it's a, it's a release and it's a kind of therapy. I feel I can express myself, um, but as a young man I think it was a way of uh, making my own identity and uh, um, and getting some uh, passion out because the school I was in was a repressed institution, very formal, traditional English school. So when I used to go downstairs and turn up the music really loud or bash away at my drums, uh, it was uh, a form of passion. Modern music sweeps through the world like a storm. Uh, yeah, through all cultures. And um, I think it's part of culture. You know, sometimes the things that seem throwaway, disposable and trivial end up lasting the longest because somehow they, they become the landscape of your lives. Uh, and they, are, they encapsulate time and emotion and feelings and who you were in love with, where you were, what you smelt. So, in that way, I think it is part of our culture. It's, it's, um, and the great thing about music for me is that it doesn't go through a lot of um, intellectual filtering. Text, you know, words, and, and a lot of visual art, I think, goes through more filtering, and music plugs directly into the emotions. I'm just going to put my hood on. Whoa. My head is getting cold now, so I put my hat on. Uh. Okay. <laughs> One of the other advantages of being an artist is you end up in situations like this. I think the thing I'd wish for most is to live in a world where everybody's rights are respected. There was a, 
the saying, I can't remember who said it, but um, peace is what happens when you respect the rights of others. And uh, for me, it's very shocking to look around the world and see uh, how we still uh, treat each other. Who would I most like to be? I don't know, I sometimes think, you know, uh, an enlightened being, you know, I used to think maybe when I get old I can uh, reach some sense of inner peace and now I think maybe it's better to be a cranky old man cussing the world. But I, I don't know, um, and then I love humor, so, but then I look at people who make humor and they seem to have very sad lives. But uh, I think I'd like, most like to be myself. I think for me, happiness is being with the people I love. Definition of unhappiness, probably being with the people I love, yes. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, but I think for me, in my life, yeah, relationships have been a bigger source of unhappiness than anything else. Um, so that's an area of work for me. Um, I think the worst thing for me was my divorce uh, because I had two children and uh, I think perhaps one of the happiest things for me is being a father and so to be pulled apart from that um, was very painful. I've been very lucky I haven't lost anyone close in my life uh, that both my parents are still alive and uh, so in that way I think I've I've been uh, been very lucky so far. Biggest mistake? I'm not sure. In many ways, I don't feel you make mistakes because when you make wrong turns, you you learn from them. I think I've hurt people that I've loved. That is perhaps the thing that I regret the most. I guess work, first thing comes up is that work for most people is what they do to get money to feed themselves. Uh, and yet for me, I feel I haven't worked like that in my life. I feel very lucky that I've been able to make a living making music uh, and doing something that I love to do and would do whether I get paid for it or not. So. Um, but there are times when uh, it goes on much too long or much too late and you get tired and bored and then it becomes uh, like work. Love means giving, I think. Giving yourself uh, in a way that you I can't in any other situation. I think people are what makes life livable and nature too, because when I look around me and I see things moving and changing all the time and water especially I love to be near because it's always in motion. Um, but first of all, I think it's uh, love and companionship that means the most. I, I don't think I've ever really wanted to uh, look at suicide. And I think for life to be unlivable, it means effectively suicide. I think broken heart is as close as I've got to it. but. Uh, I think in some ways both my parents are survivors and I have that instinct strongly in me. I think other living beings are extremely important. It's uh, 
how we relate to life. You know, sometimes I think everything is in um, these life and death cycles. When you see plants uh, with time-lapse photography, they seem to have a life that we can recognize. When you see the earth sped up many, many times faster, it again seems to be alive. So uh, it, it all seems to be alive. I, I think I like this Buddhist idea of life in everything. And uh, the things you most relate to are those most similar to your own uh, time frame, your own gear. So other living creatures, I think, are uh, are very important to, to us and uh, I think mankind is incredibly arrogant the way it assumes that the planet is there for our use and abuse without any regard for the other species that uh, inhabit this uh, planet with us. I don't have an easy answer for the question of who created the universe. An idea that uh, I was quite attracted to in um, Cymatics, which is the study of uh, um, the impact of sound on materials, and uh, there, you know, they believe that that um, sound attracts matter, and I quite like the idea that first of all there was a sound, and you know, matter, whether it was particles or atoms, were attracted to this vibration. Um, so I think that's uh, a, uh, the most attractive idea for the start of the universe for me. I think I've never been sure what happens after death, but I have some um, belief in uh, reincarnation as, as an idea. It seems very appealing. Uh, and when you see some of the lamas in Tibet go through these initiation tests, if you like, where they recognize um, the objects that they had in previous lives. That seems quite uh, convincing sometimes. Um, and there are so many reports of uh, the sense of um, a tunnel of light and sense of familiar spirits that people have given when they've had near-death experiences, you know, when they've come back apparently from the dead. So either that is a very kind way that uh, the body closes down with this beautiful illusion or there is something there and I choose to believe there is something there. I guess, yeah, my question is how do you leave behind a better world than the one you entered?